This is Brett the Hitman Hart, and you're listening to the Smack Raw Podcast. Okay, has this always been a thing? Where have I been? How's it going, guys? And welcome to the Smack Podcast NXT 30 recap. We have the unholy alliance of podcasts right here, man. We got a whole crew of people. Obviously, I got my boy, Aaron Real Petty. RN, Mr. 8984. I don't know what other nickname to give you, man. I'm trying to like play off of Matt's gimmick where he gives Travis. Britt Baker. A... Britt Baker. Yeah, yeah. Britt Baker of our NXT podcast. How's it going, my man? Glad to have you on here. Uh, also have our stepbrother in podcasting, Mr. Matt Ritter. The warden, Matt Ritt- Ritter. And uh, as you can see, twinning over here with the Black Lives Matter and the VO shirt. And the creator of said shirt is joining us too, TC Fontaine from Young Kings Wrestling. How's it going, everybody? Thank you all for joining me. What's good, y'all? How's it going, guys? Okay. Fuck you, man. <laughs> I was on mute. My bad. Uh, yeah. yeah let, me, let me do this real quick. Vince, let me do this real quick. <laughs> yes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Smacked Raw podcast, NXT TakeOver 30 edition. Your host, Vince Delgado, did a great job, but let me introduce to my, uh, below me, I guess, Mr. Mean Jelly Bean himself, a.k.a. RN, <laughs> a.k.a. Oren, a.k.a. Britt Baker, a.k.a. Mute RN, and from the Young Kings podcast, our friend, the creator of this shirt, the Jeff Hardy Stan and the Bret Hart hater, T.C. Fontaine. <laughs> Young Kings Wrestling, by the way. Young Kings Young Wrestling. Kings. Almost had it. Almost had it. Hey, but that's a solid solid Close. intro, man. But, you know, Matt's a little bit better than I am. He's kind of like the Bruce Buffer of wrestling podcasting intros. So that's where I give him his credit there, man. Not but, even Michael, just Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> that's more accurate. It's it's accurate, man. I'm not trying to cla- like cla- gas him up too much, man. I'm not trying to gas him up too much. Uh, so, uh, like I said, we're here to recap uh, NXT TakeOver 30. They're thir- the dirty 30 of takeovers. According to Natalia, 30 years of uh, res- uh, wrestling takeovers. 30 years. Did you guys see that post of Natalia saying 30 years of takeovers? Yeah, uh, TC, you muted yourself again. <laughs> he did. He did. Uh, hey, I'm with it, man. Of course, he a habit. To, he wants to give himself his own uh, gimmick. I was going to say, Travis isn't here. You guys don't have to mute yourself. Exactly. Buddy. Exactly, man. It's, it's okay. fine. It's fine. We're all good here, man. We're all friends here. This is a safe zone, TC. You don't need to mute yourself. Uh, but yeah, no, I saw I saw Natty's bullshit uh, saying thirty years because you know take over thirty, and she thinks there's just one takeover a year, some shit. Right. I mean, she was on the first takeover. You think she'd know that wasn't thirty years ago? But it's right. Natty, I hate man. her. It's Natty. He's man. like one of the women I actually hate. Natty is if live, laugh, love was a person. <laughs> I've, I've heard you make that analogy before, man. I love it. I fucking love it. Um, but Still before we. It. Before we actually start the actual recap for the show, I want to go ahead and remind you guys to check us out on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notice. Also, check us out wherever you download all your audio podcasts, listen to it, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that good stuff. Of course, we can be found on WrestlingNewsWorld.com. Check them out for all your latest wrestling news, but also check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash podcast to get all these amazing stickers you're going to be able to see on your screen. But if you need a visual proof, look at it. Look at this. Stickers, 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 stickers. Get your own stickers and subscribe to the $5 tier, guys. It's great content right there. You get early access. And uh, you can go ahead and sh- get a video shout out or question or unpopular wrestling opinion and be featured on the show itself. Uh, but with that being said, let's get the plugs out of the way. And this oh, gets- before you go, one more thing, Vince. Yeah. If you guys harass Kyle enough, and then get your wife and or girlfriend pregnant. He may just send you a smack and or a smacked raw onesie, which I have, <laughs> which is the exact same sticker that RN showed on a beautiful pink onesie. Right. That as soon as my baby gets to wear, I'm going to burp her, have her throw up all over it, and then take a picture and send it to Kyle. Oh, that's beautiful. That's perfect. I'm all for it, man. That's great. <laughs> but. Uh, Let's actually get started with the recap. Uh, we started things off. We're going to start off with the kickoff show, the triple threat tag team, uh, number one contenders match between Breezango, Lorcan and Birch, and Legado del Fantasma 
the way I'm going to go about this, since there's so many of us, we're just going to go at the count of three, thumbs up or thumbs down on this match, and then we'll dissect it from there. How's that sound for you guys? All right? So, three, two, one, thumbs up or thumbs down. I'm going to go right here. Okay, we're all in agreement. So, for the most part, this is a solid match. Um, the one thing I put down in my notes, because I knew Matt was going to be on the show, how do you feel about Fandango using the Crucifix power bomb, but not a Damian Priest? Like, what's your take it's on bullshit. that? It's <laughs> bullshit. It's bullshit. First off, Fandango said he was going to be serious in the match and playful in his entrance, and you got him out there gyrating his hips during the match and falling back into the old shit. But right. uh, no. That cross power bomb is not a regular move. That is a finisher, and it is a finisher for a guy the size of a Damian Priest mm -hmm. with a presence and a look of a guy like Damian Priest, not a Fandango. Fandango should be doing his kicks, doing, you know, I mean, I'm sure he's a solid wrestler mm -hmm. doing that uh, shit. He should not be hitting a cross power bomb. What, what's your take, TC? Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't really pay that much attention to it. <laughs> Okay. But the the little bit, uh, I'm trying to multitask and, and work and watch a match at the same time. So hey. uh, I didn't really, really look at it that much. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. But uh, the little bit I saw from it, it was cool. I, I, I did not catch the ending. So I'm going to assume that uh, that Fandango pinned either Oni Lorcan or Danny Birch because it was. Uh... Please tell me that's what happened. No, it was actually Tyler Breeze that went ahead and hit the supermodel kick on, I think it was either Lur Lurkin or, or Birch and picked the win. Okay. Those are new number one contenders. Uh, I as think long as you don't have Phantasma eat the pin in this match, yeah. that's all that matters because that, that would be just idiotic. This is what I feel like where this is going, why I feel like this makes sense. I don't I don't see too much of Imperium on the, the NXT brand. Then, obviously, spoiler alert, NXT UK is going to be coming back, so they might be going back over there. So, Breezango are probably going to be a transitional champion for Legato del Fantasma to go ahead and take them off of them. Because you know WWE doesn't like to do heel versus heel like matches, and you can't do Imperium versus Legato in a straight-up two-on-two tag match. So, I think Breezango gets the titles off of Imperium, and then we transition quickly over to Legato then, so that everybody's draped in gold over there. I needed my Brett and Brawlers to win that one, though. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, quickly, you know, we're addressing a little bit of SmackDown here, but based off what we saw with the Lucha House Party, where Kalista looked like he had a little bit more of an edge to him, I would like to see him transition over to NXT, enjoy uh, Phantasma mm -hmm. and, and them. I, that's what I want to see. I'd be all kidding. I said, I said that on SmackDown recap last night. Yeah, that's, exactly that's, that's why I brought it up. I, that's why I brought it up. But, Matt, you're not feeling that. Why? Why is no. that? Kalisto needs to get on his single shit. Lucha House Party didn't work for him. Mm -hmm. He's got talent. He's got skill. Now he's got that, you know, COVID cut body. Mm -hmm. That man needs to go on a singles run, do some single shit, you know, hit one of those mid-card titles up, push himself. That's where he needs to be. We don't need to latch him to another group where he's not going to be the star. Mm -hmm. Phantasma's the star of Legato Del Phantasma. You don't he's need to throw him star. in there. He's not a star. He can One, be. No, he cannot be. Yes, he no. can. Not wearing a mask in WWE. Luchadors will not be a star unless you're Rey Mysterio. Stop That's it. it. That's all we've ever got. Stop. Flat out. Let it, let it go. No, no, no. I, I don't agree with that. But overall, though, I, I think that was the right the result. That was the that. right result, man. We're going to transition over to the main card here. We had Finn Balor taking on Timothy, Timothy Thatcher. And, you know, I just want to go ahead and say this. Fuck Thatcher. Because of him, I have to go ahead and get a neck tattoo. And... Now, with this whole bet, we're just going to go ahead and address it since we're on we're Meow on the, the main card. We got to go ahead and talk about my bet. Me and RN had predictions bet. So now I'm playing the Meow game. So I'm going to be saying Meow as often wait, as... Wait, 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 wait. When are you... What, what are you doing? Meow. The Meow when? game. Meow. When? What? Meow. When did it start? Right? Okay. Right, right Meow. Right Meow has started. Okay. So... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hell? see. We'll see. If I can't, if I forget, please, please, by all means, oh, I, call me out on this. this. So, look, so TC, if you didn't get a chance to check so, it out, should somebody else take over hosting duties? Uh, no. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no, it's like I, I I waited till the main card to go ahead and like start this whole meow <laughs> game thing going. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to keep that going, but I can't promise I'm gonna be the best at it. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a nice little like little little mini game like bet that we had going on with our end. But Finn Balor, Timothy Thatcher. Honestly, I thought this was a really good match. I liked how Thatcher worked on the leg throughout and like the win here by Finn Balor with the 19, with the 1916 was a solid pin here, solid win overall. Right man won this match. For the most part Finn Balor seems to be like the go-to guy for takeovers. He's almost like Mr. Takeover. You want to play off of what Young Well, Jesus Takeover did. wins most all time. Yeah, most yeah. all time. I think what was that like his 12th win if I'm not mistaken? 12. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also, too, the one thing, like, I just want to go ahead and say it. I love Finn's edge that he has in NXT going going right now, but he hasn't accomplished anything since he arrived there. He hasn't won a title. He keeps going after these feuds, but doesn't. Blame COVID. <sighs> is it really COVID's fault, though? It is, though. Because it's COVID's, COVID's fault. Because, everything's fucked up. Listen, COVID ruined the TakeOver UK show where him and Walter were supposed to face off. And ever since then, Finn's just kind of been in a holding pattern, which I think they're probably going to transition him back to NXT UK if if they allow travel. I don't know what mm-hmm. that's all about. But, yeah, this that's whole match up, so. is because of COVID. If it right. wasn't for COVID, we would be seeing Pete Dunn versus Thatcher right now, mm-hmm. and Finn Balor versus Walter would have already happened, and Finn Balor would probably be your NXT UK champion right now. Would he, though? So because of COVID... I think he was going to. Over the reason Thatcher got called. I think he NXT was going to take out Walter in the first place. I don't. Right. I don't know about that, man. I feel like we were already seeing seeing some red flags with uh, Finn Balor's NXT run going forward because he was healed and he wasn't, and that he just. It was bad luck timing, too, because he was going to do the Matt Riddle thing, and then he got injured. Then he did the John, Johnny Gargano thing, but that didn't last too long. And then the whole Adam Cole stuff. He never actually had like a singles match with Adam Cole to go after the title. Yeah, he did. Did he? Like, yeah, but, like, but, but that, 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 that was it. They like, brought it was a takeover. Uh, no, no, it was not a takeover. It was like it an, was NXT. At, an NXT. Yeah. It was the very first match. The main event was the women's title um, mm-hmm. where Rhea lost, or I think Rhea lost that title in that main event match. She lost the title of Mania. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So Rhea had a main event title match that night, and Balor versus uh, Cole opened the show that night. But isn't that telling of his like run here at NXT? We can't really think of anything of note like that. Like we can't even keep track of what he was doing. That's kind of my whole I'm point. With- is that his run? Like it's it's solid, but it's not what we thought it was going to be. It's kind of like pulled off from what no, his not, initial it, it was. It wasn't just COVID. COVID did have a, a a big impact on it. I'd say it was like 60-40, just him, him not doing what it is, 40 COVID. Because like you said, before this shit even jumped off, like it ain't like he was like in some high-profile shit or had anything going on anyway. The edge and him being kind of heelish has helped out. Mm-hmm. But to me, like this shit's lackluster. Like it, it, To me, what was the point of bringing him here if you wasn't going to throw him and put him in the title picture and make him be like a focal point of it? That was right. the whole point of you bringing him He's a fucking mid carter. Like, how can you have somebody that that's dope? And not to mention how, how much he missed t- to NXT. He's literally a fucking mid carter. Let's just call a spade a spade. He's yeah. a mid carter. I mean, uh, overall though, what you guys thought of the match? Because I enjoyed it. I the style that they worked. Finn Balor was working more of a ground based match and was actually going mm-hmm. into and playing into like Thatcher's strengths. I thought the match was really good to open up a takeover. It gets a thumbs up for you know me. How I feel what about, about you Thatcher. guys? Say what? You know how I feel about Thatcher. So. Yeah. I mean, that's it. To me, I think I felt like Thatcher should have won because if you're not putting Finn over and making him go on a win streak mm-hmm. and making him just like blaze through these motherfuckers, then let him put over younger talent. And I feel like he would, that would have did Thatcher some help if he had got this win. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. it is what it is because it's Finn. So like, I'm not, I'm not gonna be broken up under because I mean, to me, he's him and Jar- him and Gargano are NXT. So if right. he could, he doesn't win over anybody, it is what it is. Matt, he's done. Did tweet. Pete Dunn did tweet out Thatcher's name after that match. So I definitely think that's the route they're going to go is Pete Dunn Thatcher as soon as they can get there. And I think that this win that he got is building him now that NXT UK is opening back up to go back to face Walter. Mm -hmm. They're building Finn back up for that. So that was the purpose of Thatcher losing. I honestly was more upset that you guys were right last uh, Wednesday or Mm -hmm. no, last night 
you guys were right last night that we weren't in the Thunderdome and NXT got gypped out of having TakeOver 30 at the Thunderdome. Mm -hmm. I was distracted for a lot of this match because I was just like, what the fuck? Why are we doing this? But they, the they were able to bust out the WrestleMania 30 like set, you know, like the three I X's they used to. Shit! <laughs> they uh, should have been in the fucking Thunderdome, bro. What's the point you. of that, bro? Like, that it's TakeOver 30! How do you not put it in the goddamn game. Thunderdome? TC, how do you feel about this, man? How do you feel about the match, too? Man, I, I love this style of wrestling. So, uh, big, big Thatch fan. So, you know, any combination of like catch, you know, Matt wrestlers or any guys that got like judo experience, anything of that sort, sign me up for it, man. Yeah. Uh, Finn Balor, I, I love how uh, uh, Thatch kind of worked on his knee, kind of, you know, took out. You can't really hit the coup de gras with a, you know, with a messed up knee. So, work over it uh i, I enjoy I, I love submission based wrestling um Me too. but i'm going to contradict myself uh here <laughs> shortly though on that but I, i'll get to that in a okay second. okay so, interesting i want to talk about did y'all see how bad he beat the shit out of finn though like he looked like he was in a strap match when it was all said and done <laughs> oh right? yeah yeah no it was yeah, vicious man it was nasty thatcher was giving him them, them hands boy Shout out to Reek Havoc, because to that point, he's in the chat saying that we need to get Thatcher on Raw Underground. Please. I'm with it. I've been saying that for a minute now. I've been saying that for a minute. He should definitely be in there. Uh, so it's safe to say that you guys all gave this match a thumbs up? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, let's transition over to the North American title match. And I kind of want to make a petition for a, a North American title ladder match at almost every takeover, because they're really, really good. I thought this match was really, really good. It wasn't as good as the original one where the title was it, like it debuted and Adam Cole won it. But this match was really good. At one point, we had Damian Priest doing his best Sheldon Benjamin impression, trying to run up the ladder and do like a flip oh, onto the outside. It was botchy. It wasn't as good. But, you know, A for effort. I right? mean, Sheldon's barely got off, though. Like, And if you pay attention, <laughs> like, if you pay attention in Sheldon's, and I just realized this maybe a few months ago that Finley was like supporting the ladder the whole time mm -hmm. so he could do it. No, Never. but that was Pay there was a spot like this, like that, when uh, Gargano did the sunset flip to to uh, Grimes. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, fucking thick. Uh, no, not that guy. <laughs> Bronson Reed held on to the ladder. So, like, he couldn't. That was for you, Matt. He held on to the ladder <laughs> so the ladder didn't fall when he tried to do the uh, the sunset flip. Like, I wanted, yeah, that shit was that. I looked at that. I was like, what, what is he doing? And he, I mean, that moment, he put a headlock on that damn ladder. Yeah, for so, sure. Shout out to Thick Boy Bronson Reed for that Bam Bam Bigelow <laughs> cosplay. Oh, yeah, it was fire. Yeah, Bam Bam uh, Bigelow, man. Like the minute I seen him, like that, that was fucking dope. Yeah, that was that was dope. Like I said, even though I hate the Archer gimmick and I think he needs to drop it, that mm -hmm. entrance for Priest was fire as shit. Mm -hmm. The whole match, I mean, the whole time I'm sitting there and I honestly didn't know who was going to win. Like they had so many false finishes, especially near the end. I thought Dream was going to take it. I thought Grimes was definitely going to take it at one point. Mm -hmm. Like I had no idea what was going on. The stuff with Candace was fantastic. I loved that. I think Dream is dead. Hell Who? yeah. Who? Patrick? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think he gone. He gone for a minute. He's he's knocked out. He's out. He's out cold. Um yo man, what do you guys feel about Candace coming out to like stop Cameron Grimes and getting heavily involved in this match? I, she should have just been the sixth competitor. I, I agree. Was. I've been wanting Candace to be in an intergender match for, for a while now. Um Especially when they kind of tease it a little bit with the with the Keith Lee and uh, Mia Yim mm -hmm. uh, story they had going, uh, knowing their history, I was I was intrigued for it, but they never really did anything with it. Right. So they it was cool will. to see Candice get involved uh, here. Uh, hopefully, it's a sign for things to come. And, and and when she came in, I really started thinking like, oh damn, Johnny Gargano's about to win this. And yeah. I, I me really never did. having been a Gargano fan ever, I was low key pulling for him. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well, it was how, dope. Like when we made the bets and shit, like we took him off the off the pick list because we all pretty much thought that he was gonna win this. But I called Damian Priest. Like I like I said, I've been on the Damian Priest wagon for a little bit now. Like to me, like I fucks with him because I think he's what Roman Reigns could be if they had ever gave him some real opportunity to use his own personality and be himself. Like the shit's cool. Like he's big. He's athletic. Like. 
I definitely, I'm not surprised you won. Like, I'm into it. Yo, man. Yo, quick shout out. How about the jacuzzi out. celebration? Yeah, man. I was about to say that. I Shout out to that jacuzzi celebration where he busted <laughs> out. He just jumped right into full, he was in full <laughs> gear still. And he just jumped into the jacuzzi with Brandy Lauren. And uh, I couldn't, I don't, I couldn't tell you who the other guy was. Because he Triple H joined him too. Yeah, Triple H came into the picture. That might be the thumbnail for the, for this uh, for this episode on YouTube. That just might be the thumbnail. You're that that motherfucking so Hummer that looked like a monster truck. God mm-hmm. damn, I ain't never seen a Hummer that damn tall before and uh, shout outs everyone who let me know who she was because i went and followed brandy real quick i was trying to figure out who she was after raw underground yeah, yeah she got her ass beat on raw underground mm-hmm, yeah mm-hmm. and there's there's actually uh if you go watch i don't know if they uploaded it or not on the network but uh i think it is on the network the uh evolved anniversary show from last year mm-hmm. uh her and shasi blackheart uh had a match Ooh. on that show it was pretty good gotta check that yeah. out now shasi almost killed herself in a match too wait on the network you said yeah and what was the show called again um, evolve one thirty one. I want to say mm. it was. I know what I'm doing when I get that. off the podcast tonight. I know what That's I'm doing. That's the one they tried to counter program AEW with, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah okay. I saw that. Okay, for sure. I definitely. Gotta check that I can't out. wait for them to put Evolve on the network because that was my shit. Like that's how I got hit to Keith Lee and Catchpoint. Like me and my daughters do the Catchpoint handshake right now to this day. <laughs> yeah. Like that's that's anytime we got something going on to seal the deal, we do the Catchpoint handshake. Or they or it don't count, you know what I'm saying? So like I'm I'm pumped for this uh evolved shit when it finally gets there. Yeah. Uh shout out to Bronson Reed doing the Lord's work and just ending Patrick Clark's life by just tossing him off the ladder. Shout out to Bronson Reed. Probably the best spot of the night. I enjoyed that heavily. Uh Grimes Did you see cough up blood. Who I no, I didn't see that. I didn't see Gargano after yeah. After, After Reed came off, off with Candace on his back, mm-hmm. right. he cut to Gargano, and you could see he had blood in his mouth. No, I yeah. didn't see that. Yeah. I didn't catch that yeah. at all. He I, must have got hit in the mouth or something. Bit his lips, something, but right. you know, with all that weight coming down, you never know. Maybe pop something. Mm-hmm. That was a fire ass spot though, with Candace on his back. Like I, that was dope. It was. Uh, I love the spot. I thought. I thought um, Bronson Reed should have been bleeding from the mouth because uh, <laughs> Cameron Grimes chucked the mini ladder to his face from the. From all the way on the ground. That shit was funny to me. Um, oh, like, he grabbed like a hornswoggle sized ladder and just tossed it to that man. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Yo, who the hell put this in here when he pulled it out? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where he even got it from. It just like it popped out of nowhere in the corner. I'm like, where the fuck did he find that? Nah, he pulled it out. Like as soon as the match started, he went to pull the ladder after they cleared the ring. Yeah. Like the initial like first couple minutes, mm-hmm. he went to pull the ladder out, and that one is the small one he pulled out. He stood it up. He was like, "Who the hell put this in here?" And then Damian Priest clobbered his ass from behind, like right after he pulled it out. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, once Cameron Grimes got up there, he went ahead and, like, was able to elim- eliminate, uh, Bronson Reed from the equation, trying to get organic going through there, battling back and forth. I like the spot where, like, Cameron Grimes tries to hit him with the, with the belts and somehow, like, just misses the whole thing. Somehow ends up hitting him instead and he falls down very cartoonish-like. Yo, man, I gotta give, uh, Cameron, uh, Cameron Grimes his flowers, man. He's really, really good in the ring. He's so entertaining. I'm so, I'm salty, though, like, because to me, like, his aerial ability, like, he hasn't showed it that much in NXT, but he can fly. He can. Damn near as good as, as Phoenix, any of these dudes. Like, his 450 is something serious. Like, I thought that we would get to see that, at least let him show some of it, but I was kind of disappointed that we didn't get to see him do some more high-flying shit, but, like, he's legit in the air. Like, like damn near on, some, on Neville level, for real. Mm-hmm. Matt? I can't, I can't fuck with that title belt spot. The you can't. Lack of momentum, that lack of momentum from that belt barely fucking touching his face and then him flopping down. No, I can't. No. That's why I like this so much because it was so cartoonish. I fucking no. like, like it's pop goofy. for it. it. It works sometimes. I think for him it works even though like you didn't really get it off clean. It, mm-hmm. it, it works. Yeah, man. Uh, way, right? So then, Matt, work. so were you not feeling at all the – the tug of war spot with the ladder, with the title on top of the ladder between Priest and Johnny Gargano. No, that part I was fine with. It's just literally it was the fact that they swung the belt and it was barely swinging and it just kind of touched him. And then he just like, if he had swung it hard, I would have been fine with it. It was the lack of momentum that hit him that quote unquote knocked him off the ladder that bothered me. The tug of war spot I was good with. Like that was fine, you know, yeah. even because Priest has got those long ass legs, so we can wrap that leg around. And he can kick Gargano. He's still got a grip on part of it. Like, yeah, I was good with all that. It was literally right. just a lack of momentum from that belt that barely touched him, and he just flat backs off it. 
Okay. Do, or, do you guys feel like the right man won this ladder match, or would you have preferred someone else to walk away North American champion? You know, uh, I picked, so I'm with it. Who did you yeah, pick? I, 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 it I picked Bronson Reed. He was he. I was starting to like get behind the hype train of Bronson Reed, and I was feeling it. And I'm like, fuck it, give it to Bronson Reed. Why not? Give him a big win here. Build him up. Make him be a top mid card guy for your brand. That's who I wanted to win too, but I just really wanted RN to lose predictions. Too, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why. Do you see what uh, you yeah, I picked the. I, I picked I picked Grimes to win, but then like I started thinking during the match, like man, I think he's like the new Tyler Breeze down there in NXT. Mm. Like, he's, he's not like he's good to to be like the the foil in these types of matches, but right. he's, he's never seriously gonna win. And mm. then like God forbid, uh, you know, he gets to the main roster and his career is just gonna tank a little bit because. That's where I'm concerned yeah, he might, with Cameron. He might Grimes. Exceed, you know, he might succeed, uh, succeed, you know, doing some comedy stuff. Maybe like, you know, depending on when he comes up, if a 24 seven title still around, mm-hmm. something like that. But and that's yeah. the thing. Like, if you go back and look at some of his PWG shit, and even some of the stuff in Impact, like when he's just a serious heel and like just out there fucking people up, like he can make it work. Like I don't understand. Like when they can't figure out something, there's a all right, be a funny guy. Like it. It, they don't have to be like that, but I, I have been saying from the beginning that he was going to be the go-to heel for everything moving forward, like especially with the Keith Lee shit. Vince can attest to that. So yeah, at least we know that he, he will have a spot in NXT. Like he's always going to be that first heel that the upcoming face goes against to see what he's made of. So at least you know what I'm saying. So the new Dolph way. Ziggler for me roster <laughs> is what you're Pretty saying. Much, yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what? It's not a bad role. Dolph Ziggler's been around forever. You know why not? You know you can, you you, you can keep that going. Why not? But uh, yeah, they gave him a couple title runs. So yeah, you know, just, sure. I don't know if I ever see Cameron Grimes as a world champion on main roster though. No. I don't see it. Yeah. NXT maybe might give him like a like a title run. I mean, Vince doesn't like hairy guys. I don't know if you've noticed that, but Vince doesn't. <laughs> Albert. Killian Dane, like he doesn't like hairy dudes. No, Albert got way too much love in the early 2000s that he should have been getting. <laughs> way too much. You know what? I can't disagree. And with then you. when he came back from from New Japan, they tried to do the same thing. Never Inside. got over. Lord Tenzai. Then he Brodus turned Clay. into Sweet Tea uh, with Brodus Clay. Nah, man, that that shit was trash. Uh, but yeah, like we mentioned, but he he Hall of Famer though. Let's let's give him some credit. He a legend. He a Hall of Famer. He he he's the head coach of NXT. Well, That's the, probably his best thing he's NXT. contributed to wrestling recently. Like, it's him being the it is, coach. It is. It definitely is. For sure. So, he a Hall of Famer off of that alone. You know, if his wrestling career was very, very underwhelming. Mm-hmm. But I mean, TNA gave us Trish Stratus. So, I'm going to say that was the best thing he was a part of. But NXT right. is right up there. Yeah, for sure. And his Japan runs were fucking dope, for real. I mean. I didn't watch a lick of it, man. I am I I didn't start watching uh, New Japan until, like, after the hype of, like, Bullet Club and Finn and like AJ Styles. And Honestly, stuff. I didn't know people really like watch New Japan like that until 2017. Right, nah, right. Kurt Angle, see, Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar back in New Japan back in the day. Like I knew about all that, like, but it it was Fire, it man. wasn't popping like that how it is now. Mm-hmm. Like now, was, you know, people argue is probably the, the second best you know company in the world. Mm-hmm. And I they wouldn't be wrong about that, but I think Direct TV doesn't get Japanese, so uh, I, I, I watch none of it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so, yeah, like we mentioned, Damian Priest, new North American champion, and he got to celebrate in the jacuzzi with Brandy Lauren. So, huge win for him all around. Great night for Damian Priest. Uh, and whoever that other girl was, too. Like, yeah, I don't know who that was. But so I, I saw someone tweet saying that it kind of looks like a brunette Natalia, and I kind of saw it. I kind of saw it. I kind of saw it. I'm bringing her up on our show. <laughs> But yeah, so I was I was talking about giving uh, Cameron Grimes his flowers. I really want to sit here and give as much as I hate to say it. I want to give Pat McAfee his flowers, man. He had the I think him and Adam Cole had the best match of the entire show. What like I, what I, the fuck? Sec, second best to me, but it was I, it was very good. I was gonna say that women's title match might be better in my opinion, but no, dude, Pat for like we, you guys were talking about it. You guys were talking about all of the celebrities who have come in, and you said I believe on your show. If he is half as good or as good as uh, fucking Arrow, what the fuck? Uh, Stephen Amell. Amell. Yeah. Stephen Amell yeah. was, then it's going to be great. He was as good, if not better, than Stephen Amell. Like, oh, I, think really I think he was better. I think he was better. Yeah. 
impressed the hell out of me. And I hate saying it because the guy's a fucking douchebag and I don't like him. <laughs> Bro, that's what I mean. That's what I like him the most. And my thing is like, imagine if he really had fucking like five, five, six years ago when he wasn't 40, if he had really tried to get into this shit. Cause he's already that promo that he cut on Wednesday was better than 90% of the motherfuckers cutting promos on any promotion. And you can at me if you want. I'm sorry. It just was. And Adam Cole did not help him in that promo at all. All he said was two words at the end. He yeah. carried that whole promo and then comes and shows up like that in the ring and just all his heel tactics okay. and everything that he was doing and shit. Like, the shit was phenomenal. Bro, the only thing I will say about Pat McAfee, you got to step up your ring gear game if you're going to keep wrestling, man. You can't come out oh. looking like you about to hit up the YMCA back in the 1980s looking like that, man. He looked terrible. That was garbage. That was trash. Once uh, once he removed the T-shirt, he looked a little bit better, like tank top. But God damn, he looks terrible. Like, I cannot take him s- serious. He looked silly with that getup. But a lot of great spots from McAfee, the Swanton to the outside. Him uh, was crazy. That that uh the, the ricochet flip off of the top rope. Yeah, insane. and then springboarding, like leapfrogging to the top of the, the, the top the rope. Jeez. Superplex. Oh my gosh. All of it was good. Like even like him, like them teasing the whole punts, like like that Randy Orton punt to the outside, him missing, hitting the steel steps, and then that playing up that injury for like a minute. He forgot about the the injury when he did the backflip, but you know, whatever, nitpicking there. Uh, great showing by Pat McAfee, and even the end was great. Like at one point, it I thought the, it should have, it should have been invented. Mm-hmm. I thought McAfee had the match won. There was plenty of near, near falls in this match when he hit the the punt kick after the low blow. Down my, like, oh damn, they're really about to give this win to Pat McAfee here, but no. I ain't uh, think that. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I knew I knew it was gonna be a good match, but I never thought that he was gonna beat Adam Cole. I'm sorry. I did. When he <laughs> hit that punk kick, I was like, oh, fuck. Rick yeah. Baker's going to be pissed. Um, <laughs> but did, did you did you see the little subtle uh, foreshadowing, if you want to call it that, where they had a – after this match, they were joined by Drew McIntyre, and they yeah. kind of hinted, you know, that he was taking notes on how to kick out of punts. So – we're going to see. Nice. Okay. Hey, if Drew McIntyre kicks out of a punt tomorrow at SummerSlam, I will lose my shit. I will lose my I mean, shit. Shawn Michaels sat up after one. I don't see why Drew can't kick <laughs> you out. Know, fuck Shawn Michaels for that oh, That shit. That shit pissed me off. Like, it Shawn me- Michaels is so insecure about his hair. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is sad. It is actually sad. That's my goat. It's sad, though, at this point. Bro, like, like, he, he, he needs to just, just go home, it. man. Just go home, man. Just go home. And that motherfucker eyes cocked like a pistol, boy. I can't. That's the only thing I can look up every time he's on screen. Yeah. God, that motherfucker be wandering, boy. I don't know where he'd be looking. Yeah. Fucking, he's looking for a sneak attack. That's how uh, he was able to get up. That's why it wasn't so effective. He saw it coming. Also, at too, the camera and at the kick. Also, too, not to dog on Shawn Michaels too much. That dude needs to take better care of his teeth. They be they be fucking yellowish when he be talking. He's from Texas. <laughs> right. Say, He's from Texas. He's out there hunting, probably chewing. Like that's what I'm saying. The motherfucker probably dips nine days a week. Shit, probably, probably goes to sleep with when it was shit in his mouth. Yeah, he, he I mean, needs to cut that. His teeth look as bad as Pat McAfee's Pat McAfee's entrance attire. True, fair point. Yeah. Fair point. Um, somebody in the uh, somebody in the chat or not the chat on Twitter said that Pat McAfee looked like uh, the way you show up to a 2K story mode at the PC. Yes, <laughs> yes, I fucking love that. Yes, I totally see that shit. I think they actually have a similar gear. What uh, else, too? If you paid attention, like I, when he did the like Swan Santana or whatever off the fucking rope, him his dudes was gone. AJ and them and all them, the motherfuckers was gone. <laughs> they were they was nowhere near. They was not involved in that at all. Yeah, that was all the security. And hey, the, they said, "Hey, y'all not paying me enough to do this shit." Mm-hmm. Exactly. I'd, shit, I'd run see- too. Fuck you, mean, <laughs> like I'd run too. I'm not gonna be in the middle of that. Um, so Adam Cole gets the win. With the Panama Sunrise, is this the first time we've seen him get the win with the Panama Sunrise? I feel Hell like they yeah. always kick out. I feel like they always kick out of that move. He does 19 a fucking match, and then they kick out of it. Just be dream with it at a, in your house. That don't, did he? God damn. Oh, okay. The parking okay. lot brawl. I think he did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the parking lot brawl was in the truck, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, because it was, it was, it was like into a pile the, of chairs it, it was, and shit. Yeah, the chairs. Oh, yeah, okay, the chairs. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that was, like, enhanced. That, that it was enhanced. It was enhanced because of the because of the entire, and I, like, chair. I think stuff. he won the title with it, too, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. I don't know. 
Can't recall. I can't recall. I gotta run it back. Yeah. Like, I, I'd be terrible at fucking, like, quiz shows and shit. Because I, I, I lose track of, like, little tidbits of information kind of like that. I mean, I came on y'all game show and, and killed shit, so... Yeah, but that's UTC. <laughs> you're, you're like a whiz at this, man. I, I swear... Speaking this of probably... which, when are we going to do more of this game show? Because I need to challenge TC for that title. Mm. Like... You can't just you can't just make a champion and then cancel the show because he whooped your ass. Like, <laughs> you know now. what? You know what? Uh, my people will did talk the episode to your people. even come out? No, it did. man. Wait, did it? I, I don't think, think so. it did. I don't. I, even... did, I don't. I didn't see it. I was looking I for it too. Man. I, I, I just think... kind of forgot about it. Hey, man, it was a shit show towards the end. TC. I still feel bad about it. It was. It was. <laughs> but uh, but I'll, I'll bring it back. I'll bring it back. I'll bring it back. September. I'll, I'll make its return in September. Uh, I have plenty of time in September, so hit me up for sure, for sure. Uh, moving on to the NXT Women's Title match between uh, Dakota Kai and accompanied by Raquel Gonzalez taking on Io Shirai. Jesus, plenty of kicks and knees for everyone involved. Guys, thumbs up, thumbs down on this match. Thumbs up. Yeah. Do you guys think this was better than the McAfee Cole match? Or yes, I do. Yeah. Really. That's interesting because I love Io Shirai. She's one of my favorites, but I thought the McAfee Cole match was better. But by all this, means, tell me why you guys be, thought it was better. This was my match of the night going into it. it it's hard hitting. Um, you know, there's a lot of psychology uh, throughout the match. Like mm-hmm. a lot of Io's offense is kind of, you know, like the the six one nine she does. She had to do that with one arm. Like it was it was cool. Um I definitely expected this to be the, the best match of the night, and they did not disappoint me at all. So I, I was, and and one other thing, like, it, it, and it kind of during it, I was just like, I wasn't too big on it. It, it was the post match stuff with the uh, Raquel and Rhea Ripley. Yeah, but, I can't stand her ass. Bro. You mean Super but Saiyan? But then Rhea? they show they show Rhea Ripley just kind of just like eyeing Io Shirai in the background as she's celebrating. I was like, okay. Like okay, that now I'm 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 cool with this segment right here. Yeah. Because at the time I'm like, all right, we taking away from EO's victory. I don't like that. But dude, they gave her time to complete her celebration and, and you know foreshadow something else going down. So we might get a heel Rhea Ripley again in the mm-hmm. future, possibly. Yeah. Uh there there was a, l- a lot of tidbits of stuff to like dissect there. We'll we'll, we'll get more into it. Uh, I, I like the good submission work here by both women, the cross face, the arm bar spots at one point. Like they really were playing that up. I, I loved all of it. Dakota Kai hitting the go to kick or the the GTK and then EO GTK barely GTK Oken. GTK Oken. I I'm with it. I'll I'll, I'll allow it. No no no. no. Uh, That's what fucking Todd Phillips or either Todd Phillips or Corey Graves didn't know what the fuck to call it. and they're like, She hit her with the go to Kai Oken. Like Completely. <laughs> Corey Graves was fumbling a lot. Yeah, yeah. Because he hasn't it's been like, watching the product. You could, t- you could. He tell hasn't been in NXT time. in like three years. So like, my thing is like, fuck him, bro. Bring Morrow should have been there, bro. Do we know love- why he wasn't there? So I'm they, pretty sure they Morrow. They didn't say what. Well. I'm pretty sure Morrow hasn't been at any of the shows, and he's just been doing voiceovers. He has been doing that go- at home. Him, him and Beth yeah. had been doing voiceovers this whole time. So it's hard. The show was live. It's hard to have him do a voiceover live. But was Beth there, or was she Beth, still doing? Beth was it? Beth was still doing it too, though. So yeah, that's interesting. From man. what from what somebody told me, and what people have been saying, that he hates fucking Corey Graves and wanted nothing to do with Graves. Oh like, yeah, that, that makes too. sense. That makes plenty of fucking sense. Now, yeah, okay. Um, what you guys thought of the the ref spot allowing Raquel to get involved and hitting her like one arm choke slam power bomb thing? It looks fucking vicious. I was I was here for all of it. And I'm surprised that they made Dakota look so hard and like such a viable fucking threat. Like that's the part that I liked about it, where mm-hmm. it wasn't so much just some chicken heel, chicken shit heel shit getting her over. No, she was beating the brakes off of fucking E out. Like she yeah. was the kicks, the missions she hit, a couple of her finishers. The like I said. Then Raquel getting involved, like I was, I was here for it. Like I, we, we both said, I mean, that was one of the ones we both picked EO to win for sure, like mm-hmm. hands down. But the fact that they made her look like a viable threat moving forward, like I think that's a big thing, especially with their women's division, kind of like not on a downslope, but not as strong as it has been yeah. in the past. So the more viable threats you have for the title, the better to me. Yeah, for I'm sure. shocked Triple H actually had his baby face women's champion retain here because that's something he just never seems to do. I mean, the last time that happened was Oscar. 
No, nah, because Asuka was a tweener. She'd go from face to heel depending yeah. on the feud. I think the last saying, like, she, like the last good baby face good. champion was Bailey. Bailey. Yeah, because she held yeah. it for a good minute. She was holding fourth down in NXT. Like when the rest Kyrie saying didn't get much of a run with it. Nope. Like Shayna had it for no, everything. Like Ember didn't get to do much with it. To me though, like I I'm still like on the fence on whether EO's fucking baby face or not. Cause if, if you watch that promo. Before mm -hmm. she was talking that talk, like she was like this little scary ass little girl. All I see is the little girl that was scared of Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler, just a cute girl, scared to do like that was some heel shit, bro. That wasn't talking no that talk, no, bro. Talking fire, that fire. That fucking fire. She was going in on her. I so, think. Uh, I think the biggest well, takeaway for me, real quick, uh, before I let you go ahead and make your point, Matt, is uh, Raquel Gonzalez feels like a big star and was elevated not only by her interfering in the match, but also the stare down with super Saiyan Rhea. Uh, I feel like she's a big time star. She's slowly being built up as like a big time player in that women's division. Now it feels like on par with Dakota Kai and doesn't feel like a lackey anymore. So is Rhea done with Mercedes Martinez? Did they, did oh they no. Yeah. Bad? On NXT, there's like, Oh yeah. You know, this is over. You know, they're done. This, this probably power bomb the bitch inside the oh, thing. That was so cool. Yeah. When you power bomb somebody out onto the concrete, that kind of, yeah, that's, ass, but that's why I can't get down with Rhea. <laughs> like she's too, like to me, like her air of invincibility is ass for real. And like, I don't know, like I, I'm not into it. Like just another, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, it's not for me. I know she's dope in the ring. Not taking away anything from her in ring work, and she's solid as shit in the ring, and her being one of the only like big women. So like the things that she can do with the smaller chicks, like I get it, but yeah. to me, like I ain't into this shit. Like even the stare down, like she was. Nah, much at, I fucking at. love that stare down, man. I was hyped, especially knowing that they have history that they used to be a tag team in, in the live show circuit before they actually were on both. Both were on TV, uh, Matt. But what was your point before I, I, I was I cut you off? Oh, I was going to say that uh, everything that you guys talked about is why I thought this was the best match. And I, I wasn't into it at first because, like you said, I was coming down from the Pat McAfee match. But as we got into it, and especially with EO selling the arm injury and then hitting those big mm -hmm. spots and those big moves, and then obviously my favorite part was uh, Giant Gonzalez coming in and picking that ref up like a child and just swinging him over for the pin yeah. after hitting that. Um, she she is an inch taller than China, and she has China-esque presence standing yeah. outside that ring she's got the body the build that presence so her coming in and slamming eo then Rhea coming Ooh. down i love the stare down for the same reason you did vince mm -hmm. yeah i was all with it yo man quick shout out to reek in the chat man he out here giving us the scoops real quick we'll get into that in a sec uh but yeah eo shirai retained i like the stare down boy, reek out here got sources man yeah man my boy reek <laughs> yo he's out here being the fifth member of the show he's not even on camera um, but yeah, like I like the spot where at the end Rhea Ripley was still staring at Io Shirai and just, you know, quick fantasy book in here. I feel like what they're going to do is they're going to go ahead and do a quick match between Rhea and Raquel. Rhea wins that. Then they transition to, uh, Rhea getting the title off of Io Shirai. Io Shirai puts over Rhea and puts over uh wink, wink, jab, jab, miss, uh, undeniable Tessa Blanchard when she finally makes her debut in NXT. Cause I feel like that's happening. And I think uh, with the draft coming up, I think that Io Shirai will be leaving NXT and going to either Raw or SmackDown and putting over it. Triple H going to do his damnedest to make me not watch this show anymore, I swear. <laughs> I, he, he's, he's doing his best job, man. He's doing his best Vincent impression yeah. recently with NXT. I don't think it's... I think this is the best job he's done for Raw for the lack of talent they had compared to what they have had in the last five years. Like The, the star power that they have now is nothing like it has been in the last three, four, five, six years. Yeah. I, I think yeah. he's literally turning chicken shit into chicken salad every show to me. I mean, because no, what I, other I, stars, I think, all I the think, top I, stars with the AEW? I think what TC specifically is talking about is the whole Tessa, Patrick Clark situation, bringing both those people onto NXT and given they have similar situations. But we're not going to dive too much into it. Uh, we have the return of NXT UK and Tommaso Ciampa. Ciampa's coming back on Wednesday. How do you guys feel about Ciampa returning with a video package as opposed to like a shock return? This was so foreshadowing. Easy. This was foreshadowing for me. When I saw that, mm -hmm. I had a feeling that our main event was going to go the way it did. And I, you know me. I am a Ciampa mark. Like, I love Ciampa. I thought Ciampa was better than Gargano. That's my guy. The music, all that. I'm all for it. I know you guys don't feel that way, but that's how I am. I am a Ciampa guy. But when I saw no, that no. shit, I was like, 
Cross is going to walk out as champion, and my stomach just dropped because I did not want to see that happen. Right. We're not against Champa. We're against Face Champa. Like me Faze personally, Tampa, I can't deal. Yeah, Face Champa is kind of kind of wet. <laughs> yeah, he's ass as a face. I want him to be fucking people up, attacking people from the back, using a crutch when you ain't needed a crutch in six months. That's the Champa I want. Not this like tweener bullshit, whatever the hell he was. Like Face Champa is. It's, he's, it's ass. Like, he's basically no way to trying to be Stone Cold Light. He's like light beer. It's not as good as regular beer, but people somehow drink that and think that's just as good. Um, it's like they tried to have him. The straight edge go, guy. Hey, that, that's great. Hey, hey, you but, know yeah, what? They tried to have. They tried to have Champa had like this redemption arc, and it just didn't really work out. Like, oh, no. you can't have a redemption arc with a heel that was fucking everybody up and fucked yeah. over his best friend yeah. three times, and tried to kill his best friend. You but can't come would, back from that. That video package for Champa was fucking fire. And that's one of the best parts of TakeOver tonight Yeah, were the video packages. The package oh. we put together for Rhea or EO and uh, Dakota, mm-hmm. this video package, the main event video package, they killed those packages. Yeah. That one with EO, that might be one of the best ones. Bro, everything with EO is fire. Like all, like all the promo she does, like underwater. Who the fuck does that shit? That shit's fucking dope. That underwater one shit. I had to take a shower after that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. TC, anything else you want to add about Champa returning? Uh, so, you know, we discussed it on our show a few weeks ago about Champa possibly being a member of Retribution. Mm-hmm. But uh, and so I, I thought about it, like, damn, he's coming back. But then I'm like. Maybe he still could be in Retribution since Retribution never showed a face at Full Sail. They just, you know, fuck up the performance mm-hmm. center on Mondays and Fridays. Right. That's another so it's thing. A possibility still. It's got to be NXT talent. I, I've got to believe yeah. that it's NXT talent, and I'm really hoping that Champ is leading it because, you know, no, I, think I want Miz to lead it, bro. Miz. Ah, fuck. The Wait, Miz. you know, you know what though? They have mentioned that Miz always is never he's around when late. they attack. Yeah, no, like, he's he always can... late, but. My thing is, Miz is a pussy, and he just don't he, want to be in the fight. So he, he wastes. He, he got. He got. He got fiend up. PTSD. That's all. <laughs> I. Hey, I'm, I'm, I would, hey, you know what? Even the fiend ran away from retribution too. So you know. Right. So yeah. how can you really blame the Miz if the fiend ran away from retribution? Uh, I My do, thing is, when are we gonna get how much? How many members are actually in it? Because every show is sometimes it's twelve, sometimes it's six. Keep us guessing. I'm cool with it. Forty nine. Forty nine hey. last night. <laughs> Big, when Big E called them the Foot Clan, that was accurate as hell. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> no man, I I, I kind of want them to like have like maybe like like maybe like a good five to seven key core members, but also still have like their stooges, like their like like what are they called the crawlers or like the creepers in a dark order? Like have something like similar or kind of like the druids with Undertaker have like their own like little minions, kind of like like Power Power Ranger villains. You know how they always send the Putty Patrol. You know have their own Putty Patrol. I'm with it. You know I've always been a, a fan of that kind of shit. Um, but overall, let's move on and transition over to the actual main events. Uh, we had the current NXT champion or former champion Keith Lee taking on Karrion and Cross. Uh, quickly gonna shout out reek in the chat saying that uh carrying cross is injured he separated his shoulder yep that bitch should have never won the match nope i do do you think it was at the the second rope doomsday saido suplex uh spot do you think that's where no, he i think that I, I think it was that very first shoulder block from fucking uh keith lee right at the beginning of the match hmm. where carrying cross looks like he shit his pants right that's what it was so, he, soon probably as he why got the hit, match was so as soon as he got hit he broke yeah because that match was Mm, go ahead. Well, I mean, th- these these guys are world class athletes. Like I was watching back uh, Finn Balor and Seth Rollins from SummerSlam a few years ago, mm-hmm. and Finn Balor worked that whole match with a with a fucked up shoulder. Yeah. I dislocated my shoulder before. It took me an hour to get out the bed, so I can't <laughs> imagine working a wrestling match for twenty minutes. Right. Hey, you know what? This would have been the perfect episode to have Jay Thunder on. He actually dislocated his shoulder, like, giving the guy a spear, and the guy, like, dropped too early and actually, like, landed on his shoulder. So he actually had to dislocate his shoulder because the other guy didn't know how to take a spear bump. So this would have Travis been a perfect question to ask him. Travis dislocated his shoulder, giving the guy an old-fashioned one. Yeah, Reach but around. We, yeah, but we're, we're not trying to give uh, Travis any kind of publicity <laughs> or any kind of clout on this podcast, you know. No, like, I didn't, like to me, <laughs> this match, like, I wouldn't have been mad if Karrion had took the title from him a few months down the road, but not out the gate like this. And then Keith Lee losing like this after all the shit he went through, fucking up the whole entire Undisputed Era, Cameron mm-hmm. Grimes, uh, 
Damian Priest, all these dudes destroy his own best friend, all these dudes he put away and then lose like that. Like it right. was to me it was bullshit. Like I, I didn't think he was gonna lose this match and, and just in the fashion of how he did it, like Yeah, I wasn't the, the ending to me was kinda like, really? That's it? Like you wanna give it like a cool nickname, call it the Doomsday Side to Suplex. But it's like, dude, it's just a side suplex from the second row. Right. Who who, who is that? Is that Finn Balor? What? Is that- is that Finn Balor in the corner there, Matt? What are you like, talking about? I see you trying to like sneak in one of your wrestling figures in there, man. What trying are you to distract about? me. Like whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, TZ, man, what you? How'd you feel about that ending, man? Do you think it was underwhelming, just like like I felt it was? <laughs> well, the whole match to me was underwhelming. Um, so it kind of it picked up the pace a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, late there. Uh, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed the 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 arm spot. They yes. don't do that often they don't. anymore, like they used to. So like. I, I popped for that when it came back. I, I love, I love a good old, you know, arm passing out spot. Bro, they um, used to do that all the time back in like the ruthless aggression era, and I fucking love yeah. that. Like that, and then the the figure four leg lock spot that they did in the McAfee match. They used to do that all the goddamn time. I pop heavy for like when the guy does a figure four like spot, or they do like the hand passing out spot, or when they, they're brawling on the outside and they roll in to break the count and roll right back out. Eddie Eddie used to do that a lot. Kurt Angle used to do that a lot. I I fucking love that kind of shit. It's a lot of things, and uh, I'm going I'm to get back to finishing the question off But before I drift off a little bit. It's a lot of things just, like, fundamentally and, like, just psychology-wise that guys don't do that often anymore. It's kind of frustrating. Um, but, like, as far as the ending goes, yeah, it was kind of underwhelming. Um, I, I'm, I'm biased, though, because, like, you know, I, I, you know, I got to watch, you know, when he was still killer cross on the indie circuit, got right. to see him a lot. You know, he worked out here. Uh, you know, I see him in public sometimes. So, uh, and then Keith Lee is Keith Lee. So I, I didn't have a dog in this fight like I wanted to, but uh, I, I enjoy. It. I don't know what more they can do with Cross. Uh, right. If if Champ is coming back for his belt, right? Uh, is is no? I don't know I, how they'll do that. So I, th- I um, think they're just gonna like, go ahead and give Champa his proper like match with Cross, but he's still gonna put over Cross. But looking at what Reek is giving us, saying that he separated his shoulder, it doesn't look like we're going to get that anytime soon. Like, so what the fuck? Like, My now thing just is, like, like, is this them getting Keith Lee ready to come up? Thunderdome Keith draft. coming soon. They shouldn't be because here's the thing, and that's what pissed me off is there was no reason Keith Lee should have lost this match. This was his first big title defense. Right. Since he won the title. He beat Adam Cole. He had that match against Dijakovic. What He had a match against... Cameron Grimes. Yeah. I don't even know if that was a title match. This was his first big title defense. Yeah. Keith Lee has all of the makings to be the top guy in the industry. In the industry. Not in NXT, not in Raw, SmackDown. In the industry. He has the charisma. He has the moveset. He can put on the matches. This match did not show us any of that. This match was boring as fuck. And I like Ross. I love the character. I love Scarlet. I love the fire and the flames and the witch and all the shit that they do. I love it all. But this match was underwhelming as fuck. And yeah. Keith Lee should not have lost this match. They don't this seem to match. have any chemistry at all. No, well, this goes back to what I said from the beginning when Cross debuted. He doesn't have that much ring experience. Like, he's not – he's green as shit in the ring. Like, a, a lot of people said – He's only Tommy, been wrestling for six years. That's what I said. Tommy Dreamer said this. A couple other people said it that he's not – there yet and that they were surprised that they've elevated him as quickly as they have and this match here right here's like Keith Lee has not had a fucking bad match with anybody since, since as long as I've been watching him nah. maybe a couple in the ball with, with like Tracy Williams or some shit hot sauce or whatever but other than that he doesn't have bad oh. fucking match who's smacked raw podcast in that's the chat? Kyle Is that Kyle that's Kyle fuck you Kyle. Kyle suck my balls Kyle talking about Keith Lee chokes under pressure <laughs> Keith Lee's gonna take his BBC and choke the entire AEW roster. All right, that's what's gonna fucking happen. Get the fuck out of here. That bullshit. Hey, yo, uh, did you guys hear? Uh, I don't know who the fuck it was, but someone in the crowd chanting "Bask in his ass" loud as fuck. Yes. Did, you, did you guys catch yes. that? Shit? Oh man, yes. that, I popped heavy for that. Go back and watch it. I think it was at one point where they're brawling on the outside, and then you just hear someone really loud saying "Bask in his ass," and then I just fucking pop, man. I fucking pop. I thought it was good. Uh, I thought that was good. It had some moments. It had some moments, like the like 
like the pass out spot with the hand. I thought that was really good. But overall, I that was actually the question I was going to ask you guys. Do you guys did anyone else feel like it was underwhelming of a match? And to me, I felt like the worst match on the card to me. Would you say it was it's worse than the triple threat tag match? That I don't that match wasn't bad. Yeah, that wasn't a bad match. Hmm. This match was boring. Like there, it was literally just carrying cross working an arm the entire match. And then Keith Lee getting a little bit of offense, and then the fucking ending. Like, like there was an armbar spot that was like three minutes long. Yeah, it was just way yeah. too long. It it wasn't there, man. Like the pace, and I felt like they needed to pick up the pace towards towards the end there. Like I get what they were going for, like with the match, but like the, the, the pace, the ending be... pace was perfect. Like, yeah, yeah, that was great. The finish was underwhelming that? too. The finish too, man. No, I'm, like, I'm still mad about that finish. That was the the way. And that's what I'm saying to too. Like, how the match went, if if Keith Lee had coming out winning after how the match went, I wouldn't be mad at that. Then I would give this match uh, a little bit better grade on him because that's your your face champion overcoming the odds and his arms getting annihilated the whole fucking match and he beat all that to come back and win. But to have all this slow down grind shit for that fucking long and then for him to lose the way that he did, like mm-hmm. that's where they lost me with it. Like this this is by far the worst match on the card. And then on top of that, Cross gets injured afterwards, man. What the hey. fuck? <laughs> hey, I, I, I listen to all your podcasts. Can you clear something up for me? Why are Kevin and Kyle in the chat saying more Jimmy Fallon 2020? I don't fucking know, man. I don't watch their AEW podcast. I don't either. <laughs> I, I only... I don't understand. What, what does more Jimmy Fallon have to do with fucking... We're talking NXT. We're talking real wrestling. Listen, right. Let me tell you all this. Your if, bullshit it's from, if it's coming from Kevin... <laughs> that's that's what that is. Kevin's been on the ball. That's what Kevin's probably don't even know what the fuck he's talking about right now. Especially yeah. I'm mean, eleven. Yeah, that motherfucker's blitz, bro. Don't worry about it. Ch- change that hashtag up to MJF420. That'll help you out, Kevin. More Jimmy <laughs> Fallon 420. For sure. Uh uh TC Matt RN. Anything else you want to add about the show as a whole before we sign off? I mean, it was to, besides the women's match, honestly, it was eh. Really? Yeah, this was not Takeover Thirty. Was not the best Takeover. Like, I really enjoyed what they did with Pat McAfee. I'm glad we had that match. The women's match right. was fire. I the, the tag, like you said, the ladder match was great too, and the right guy won. So we had three good matches on here. I just think the main event kind of left me, and not being in the Thunderdome, both kind of just left me wanting. I I expected bigger and better, and I didn't get it. Right. WWE is about to make history this weekend. We're about to get the first ever main roster pay per view that's better than the opposing takeover. Uh, I think SummerSlam is going might blow this one out the water. You it ain't gonna be hard. This is this is, this was fucking disappointing. Like I'm an NXT guy. Mm-hmm. This is what we do. This is the show I've watched continuously for over a year now. Nothing else. Like everything else, I I catch on the rebound or on the replay. This was the worst fucking takeover. Maybe in the last year and a half. Mm, but the bar is pretty high, and it wasn't bad by any means. It's just it was, like, not oh, up to terrible, par. It was, still the, it was still the worst fucking takeover. Yeah, I mean, no, but like, that's like that's like saying, like, oh, look at these three amazing Smack Raw podcast stickers we have. Like, the white one is probably the worst one compared to this one, but they're all still really good, you know. That's that's kind of, like, what it is. Um, yeah, to each his point, it, to each his, oh, like, on, you know, for a big four, a big four or, or big five, whatever one mm-hmm. you know you want to go with, for a big five takeover, it was it was kind of underwhelming a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the main event was not. Do you think it's like the main event? I feel like a lot of wrestling shows, regardless of their NXT or whatever company they are, like depending on how the show ends, can determine how you feel about the show as a whole. If you feel like the closing segment or match was really, really good, you walk away feeling like, man, that was such a great show. And then if you get let down with the finish, you could be like, oh, man, it wasn't so it wasn't so good. It was terrible. It was bad. Because it leaves a bad taste and a sour taste in your mouth. And I feel like that's what well, this I was. I don't think it was that at all. Because still, at the end of the day, still the best matches were not any of the matches we thought they were going to be. The women's match and... Pat McAfee and Adam Cole were the two best matches. I, I knew those were going to be the best matches walking in. I but, I was saying I, I was saying that from the get go. That's not the matches we expected to put it over the top though. Like we knew those were going to be good matches mm-hmm. out the gate. We knew those, but the championship match and even the ladder match to some extent, we right. thought that those were going to be over the Show top. Stealers. Show stealer, exactly. Being that is 
take over 30 and it's on the weekend of fucking SummerSlam. And that's the part, like, I don't think, regardless of what the outcome of the main event was, I think this still would have been an underwhelming takeover no matter what. I don't think there was anything they could have done. Oh, yeah. Even if Keith Lee won and sent me home happy that Keith Lee won, the match still would have sucked. Like, if they right. still worked the same match and changed the finish, the match still would have been bad. Like, that's yeah. just, I mean, that's just it. Okay. Fair. Fair enough. Um, before we sign off, uh, RN, obviously, pe- people can go ahead and check out Mean Jelly Bean on YouTube. They can go ahead and check out Mean Jelly Bean Means on Facebook as well. TC. Anything you want to plug before we sign out? That you came in and took the hot tag and didn't jump in for Jay Thunder last minute, man. Uh, but yeah, go ahead, plug your shit, man. Hey, man, uh, check us out YK Wrestling uh, at YK Wrestling on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, listen to our podcast. Uh, Vince and Matt have these uh, fire ass shirts that I uh, actually uh, designed myself. So go ahead, purchase them at ykwrestling.com. There's a link to our shop there. Uh, and the Lakers are up nine with three minutes to play. So let's go. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Matt, like you want to play your shit? You just dropped your, your podcast episode uh, last night, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, no, last night's episode dropped. And go listen to Young Kings Wrestling Podcast before you listen to our podcast because the very beginning of our podcast cor- cor- uh, corresponds with the very beginning of their podcast. So mm-hmm. I like to uh, I like to talk about the other podcasts that we fuck with on our show. Smack Raw podcast, Young Kings Wrestling, Dead Ass Girls, and I like to I like to kind of get a little back and forth going. So mm-hmm. we like to do that there. We definitely did that there. So that episode is dropped. You guys can find all that at Matt Ritter. There's that M A T T R I D D E R. Uh, the link trees are link tree slash Creation World. That'll get you the videos. So you guys can check us out on YouTube or on Pornhub because Smack and Raw podcast is the number one wrestling podcast on Pornhub. It's also the or only guys- wrestling podcast on Pornhub. Again, not important. <laughs> you are focusing on the wrong details. <laughs> and if you guys like the audio version, there is Linktree slash Smacking It Raw, and that'll get you all of the audio. Why did y'all get banned? Down we have no idea. I have no idea what <laughs> How the fuck do with- you get banned for community uh, standards on Pornhub? It was fine for YouTube, but Pornhub had a problem with something that we did with Kenny. I don't know if it was <laughs> some of the Black Lives Matter conversation that we had that Pornhub didn't like, or some people said it was the boob jobs and babies joke where we said that the only reason Sasha and Bailey are over is because Charlotte had a boob job and Becky had a baby. So thank God for boob jobs and babies. Cause now we got Bailey and Sasha. <laughs> on top of that. Uh, and We're going to make oh, a shirt, man. boob jobs and babies, and we're going to support, we're going to do like the young Kings wrestling are doing with these black lives matter shirts where there's donating that money to support good causes. We're going to take the boob jobs and baby shirt and we are going to donate to uh battered women's shelters and, uh, Planned Parenthood, so. Nice. Nice. Solid good cause. Obviously, you can go ahead and check out our YouTube, youtube.com slash, what, what's up? I fucking hate you, man. (laughs) What the fuck is wrong with you? (laughs) Planned Parenthood and fucking battered women. This was all Kenny's idea. I'm just, well, the the Planned Parenthood was me. Yo man, Make this sure this sure. this podcast is firing out of control. Sure. I need I need to go ahead and cut it right here. Uh, go ahead and check us out on your YouTube. Subscribe, comment, turn on the notifications so you know when a brand new video drops. Go ahead and check us out our on on our link link tree slash Smack Rob Podcast. Also check us out on uh, Patreon. Go ahead and support us. We got one, five, and ten dollar tier. Helps out the show greatly for like texts and other 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 inform- other stuff we need for the show. But with that being said, thank you TC, thank you Matt, and of course shout out to Aaron Real Petty to, for joining me for the NXT Takeover Thirty recap show. We'll catch you guys next week for more NXT. Later, y'all.